Bitcoin is down about seven. That's a big down day. Ethereum is down right now, if I can locate it, down about 8% also. Big down day. Now, in my opinion, and I've talked about this for many, many, many years, you can see here dropping below RSI 50 means a big down day. Welcome. I am Eric with Mother.com and I greet you beloveds in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator with about one and a half hours to go for this Friday session. Let's take a look at the markets here. You can see markets are down as we come close to the end of the week. And we can see the cryptos are also down, essentially down anywhere from five to seven percent. Bitcoin down about five percent, trading at forty thousand two one two. Ethereum down about seven percent, trading at twenty six thirty four. Let's go to the charts. We're going to begin with the Nasdaq daily. And if you go back to the video I sent you, paid clients that is, in the middle of the week. I was highlighting this line. It's the most simple of lines and we can draw it from here. Of course, that line begins with converging with that RSI 69.1 rejection area of the RSI and the current all time highs for the NASDAQ. Now we can also draw this line differently. We take the recent RSI high. Both are valid. But the black line is more valid because it connects to a, an important level, which is the all time daily closing high for the NASDAQ. At any rate, both lines give us evidence, as I was discussing in the middle of the week, that the market had rallied all the way back to test this line where we've been seeing pullbacks in the market. So if you are sensitive to this line, it's a simple RSI topside line. You can see where the recent pullback in the market comes, which also means when the market is going to be ready to move higher, it's going to show us evidence by moving above this line. Now, remember, sometimes how it plays out is the following. You move above the line, come back, test it and then move higher. It is that retest of the line after moving above it that tends to be a good entry. So prices would be, do something like this. And this re-entry tends to be a good entry point. But that's a subject for another day. So on this daily chart, we can conclude the following. If we keep things very simple, that we are forming what could end up being a price wedge or an RSI wedge. And so obviously, prices are going to determine, are going to be determined as to direction. If we clear this area to the upside, then the eventual move to the market is going to be higher. If we break below that range, then clearly the eventual short term move in the market is for prices to drift lower. Now, keep in mind, again, the top side line would be good guidance as a line to watch because we would need to clear that line if the market is going to go higher. Again, it's the line that began this analysis. Now, let's also not forget that we are seeing RSI rejection at the RSI 69.1 threshold, excuse me, at the 50 RSI level, we break below 50 there, 50 becomes resistance with uniform activity. And whenever that happens, it means you're going to test the recent lows. So we've come back, we've tested the lows, we've broken them. And we can actually even say for this week, we were unable to reclaim the level above RSI 50. And then there's this line here. If you use the RSI readings the way I read them, you can see a lot of information from this simple line. Put a great, great line to show you where things are shifting, especially when you have uniform activity rejection on this line. So yeah, this single line is packed with information. And you can see for this week, we tagged that line twice and we've been rejected. It's another way of saying that if the market is going to go higher, it's going to have to clear this line also. Now, let's spend a minute or so taking a look at the MACD. Now, if you're familiar with my work, you know I use two MACD settings. And you can see for this week, we were rejected when trying to reclaim that MACD zero line. 
That again is an indication of a market that doesn't have strength as of now. And there was also another MACD rejection right there at the zero line. We can even say that this was a double uniform activity rejection above zero back below it with uniform action for actually these tops right here. This resistance that I showed here was right there. So the recent resistances in the market have come around MACD zero line rejection. And we can see that if we take a look at the main MACD setting, which in this case, the one that I use, my preferred settings is 13, 21 and 8 similar to the default of 12, 26, and 9. I prefer these numbers, my settings, because they are part of the Fibonacci series numbers. Even in this MACD setting, we can see where the NASDAQ is struggling right here. So these two lines, I would say, in my opinion, where we try to cross over here, and then these two tops, are the resistance levels if the nasdaq is gonna go higher if you're timing for market re-entry assuming the market wants to recover you'd want to see this macd lines cleared to the upside and remember ge genetically or generally speaking i was trying to say from a generic standpoint if you're gonna go higher you'd want to see the macd finally stay above the zero lines the macds would have to be above zero if momentum is to return in the in the market in terms of a bullish trend higher you need your macd's above zero which means now that the macd's have been below zero for a minute in fact for the entire 2022 trading trading year so far macd's have been generally below zero and we can see the consequence of staying below zero is a market that is sideways to down 